On last night's episode of NXT, former North American champion Velveteen Dream returned after months of controversy surrounding his alleged behaviour outside the ring. He was a surprise entrant in the North American Championship number one contender triple threat match, which was won by Cameron Grimes, who pinned Kushida. It's quite the step down for Dream, who was feuding with Adam Cole for the NXT Championship shortly before he disappeared from TV. Dream was first accused of sending inappropriate images to a minor back in April, which he denied in a statement on social media. During the speaking out movement in June, more allegations emerged, and it was reported by the Matt Men podcast, Dream's days in WWE are numbered, was told by two totally separate sources. And then he was off TV for almost two months, suggesting that Dream was on his way out. But now he's back in NXT and is set to face Finn Balor next week in a second chance match to become number one contender for the North American. American Championship. But that wasn't the only newsworthy thing to happen on last night's taping. Just like Raw and SmackDown, NXT is currently being pre-taped in fortnightly batches to limit travel and the potential spread of coronavirus. This means next Wednesday's episode was actually taped yesterday, which saw Johnny Gargano take on Ridge Holland, who WWE officials are apparently very high on. But Post Wrestling is reporting that match had to be stopped when Gargano took a scary bump on his head. Apparently, both Triple H and Shawn Michaels rushed to the ring to see if he was okay. The match was restarted after a lengthy delay, and Gargano was able to get to the finish after he pushed for the match to be restarted, assuring everyone he's okay. Hopefully he is, as the pro wrestler mentality is to continue on regardless. He might be feeling the effects today instead. But we likely won't feel the effects next Wednesday, as the botch will probably be edited out and replaced with a shot of Finn Balor looking all shocked. He's like the new Miz girl reaction. NXT isn't the only wrestling brand on Wednesday nights botching spots though. On last week's episode of AEW Dynamite, Matt Hardy was left needing 13 stitches in his forehead after Sammy Guevara threw a chair at him. It was reported shortly after the show went off air that Guevara had accidentally picked up the wrong, non-gimmicked chair, and there was serious heat on him backstage for busting Hardy open. And now we've got some more details on the backstage fallout. Fightful Select run by the dastardly Sean Ross Sapp, jam that jam you mother jammer, is reporting it was chaos backstage after the botch, with a lot of people very upset with Guevara for the spot. Apparently even Matt Hardy, who is normally very mild tempered backstage, was visibly annoyed and was said to be extremely relieved the injury wasn't worse. As if the chair hit him a few inches lower, it could have gone right in his eye. We've had one too many globe luxations this month. Guevara has apologised and now, because pro wrestling's gonna pro wrestle, Hardy is using the injury as an angle to further his stronger than death gimmick. Their storyline was continued on last night's Dynamite, which I'll be reviewing very shortly. But first, here's what happened on last night's epic Quizzlemania 2000. It is the people who brought you, and I do hate saying it, hashtag FTF. It is Team Fightful. It is Sean and Denise representing Jam That Jam, a better hashtag. It is Team Wrestle Talk. We're the main event. We're the stars of Quizzlemania. We are the rock. We are Austin. Here we are, uh, me, me and my best friend Denise, that f all day. This whole FTF. JTJ thing it comes to an end at SummerSlam. Let's have a super chat party. If I win, I want hashtag FTF that f to be the official Wrestle Talk slogan. All right, SummerSlam. What? Yeah, what? okay. No, well, me and you have got this, Luke. At SummerSlam, it's going to be FTF versus JTJ. And the winner either that goes away forever once and for all. And if but you, if you win, that will become the channel official slogan. Wrestle Talk's reputation. It's family friendly branding that appeals to 18 to 49 demo advertisers, and most importantly, its YouTube monetization standings are on the line. On our SummerSlam live reactions, if Jam That Jam gets more super chat hashtags, FTF has to be gone forever. But if the unthinkable happens and Fightful get more hashtags, then WrestleTalk's official tagline will have to be F that f 
But me and Luke have got this. We're stronger than ever. We won Quizzlemania 2000 last night. And when Luke and I are together, we're unbeatable. And now it's time for AEW Dynamite in about five minutes. This episode's announced theme might have been tag team appreciation, but in truth, the theme was abusing old people. Ricky Morton got a spike pile driver, Jake Roberts was graffitied on, and playing by the rule fans were led into the stands in coronavirus times. There was no Excalibur on commentary yet again, but the lineup of Taz, JR, and Tony Schiavone has really gelled. The first match saw the Dark Order minions jump the Young Bucks ahead of their Evil Uno and Stu Grayson tag, letting a more traditional work over one wrestler to build to the hot tag structure rather than AEW's usual back and forth action. Uno and Grayson were superb here, but they lost when Nick Jackson sneaked a pin while Matt was taken out on the stage. MJF's campaign has now stretched its pole lead over John Moxley to 1500%, but what are his chances of winning at sacrifice? Awesomely, MJF's entrance here involved a callback to his Samoa Joe NXT entrance role, where he pushed an extra into the wall. He trash talked Moxley thinking he wasn't in the building in more of the same from the last two weeks, but then a much needed escalation of conflict happened when Moxley ran down and hit a paradigm shift for their first proper physical interaction. MJF sold this great, almost shaken in fear when Mox's entrance music hit, and then overselling his neck like a petulant child afterwards. Matt Hardy said he'll be cleared next week to get revenge on Sammy Guevara, but it was played up like he's still concussed when he attacked a referee thinking he was Sammy. Cody came out with his full Nightmare Family entourage next, complete with the finally finished TNT title design. His match against... Scorpio Sky had a similar big time fight feel to the NWA title bout against Nick Aldis at All In, which was made even more newsworthy by the AEW debut of longtime WWE referee Mike Chioda, who was released back in April. Cody and Sky had a fantastic match, from the superficial tests of strength at the start to brawling outside to some great back and forth counters in the final sequence. This was the best Sky has looked since his World Championship match last year. He's much better suited to a singles run, as in my bad influenced head, he often feels like a third wheel to Daniels and Kaz in SCU. Unfortunately though, he lost clean here. It was a great match, but I just wanted five more minutes to really get over Sky in defeat. His several week push felt deflated by the loss. Instead, AEW rightfully focused on the next big TNT title challenge, as Brody Lee appeared on the Tron to set up a match on the 22nd of August episode, which is the most serious threat to Rhodes losing the title yet. Because AEW are loading next week's show, Show, not just because they've got to push viewers to a different day because of the NBA, but also because they'll be going up against NXT TakeOver XXX. But counter-programming isn't a thing. Kenny Omega continued his slightly heelish work through his and Paige's match against Jurassic Express, mainly trying to hurt Marco's stunt despite him not actually being in the match. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus put up a good fight, but the tag champs rightfully won in about 10 minutes. In the main segment for Tag Team Appreciation Night, the Young Bucks and FTR praised the Rock and Roll Express and Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard in the ring respectively. It was a fantastic idea, drawing parallels between the two all-time great teams and their present day counterparts. Ricky Morton said FTR are incredible, but the Bucks are the best tag team in the world. While Arn agreed that Matt and Nick have revolutionized tag wrestling, but the best team right now is FTR. Tully, however, had no time for circle jerking and pointed out neither have won any championships in AEW yet. And he still hates Arn for siding with the Nightmare family against him and Sean Spears last year. This disagreement caused a scuffle, allowing FTR to attack the Rock and Roll Express and spike pile drive Morton. It was a fantastic heel turn angle for the characters and story so far. Omega and Paige ran down to help while Paige was like, FTR? WTF? I thought you were good guys. She just squashed Heather Monroe in this week's lipstick service. I came up with that all by myself. I think that's a pretty good line. Jake Roberts cut a promo with Lance Archer beating people up in the background. Lance then made Jake rip open his $200 shirt, turn around and reveal some Sharpie written graffiti saying, everybody dies. So let's unpack this. At some point earlier in the day, Lance must have written, everybody dies on Jake's back. Then he lets him get dressed, waited for the promo, ripped off the shirt, and then showed what it done to everyone. Hmm. 
and the main event saw the Chris Jericho vs Orange Cassidy rematch with the $7,000 obligation old school money stakes on the line. Unlike their first encounter, Cassidy went straight into full effort mode, making this less of a comedy match and more of a blood orange feud. I think I've squeezed the orange puns dry. After trying to bribe Kyoda with keeping his job earlier on, Jericho tried to use the bat while Mike looked away, but Kyoda stopped him from using it, allowing for an inner circle and best friend rundown spot and Hager taking out Cassidy, but Orange won with what was supposed to be his usual mouse trap pin. But Jericho botched it by falling backwards, making for a clunky finish. That was this week's AEW Dynamite in about five minutes. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere saying Jack. Jam. That jam. This was another incredibly solid episode in AEW's astonishingly consistent 2020 run. It was more of a setup show for next Saturday's big stacked episode, but very entertaining nonetheless. This week's Dynamite is 3 out of 5 by their own very high standards. A major WWE angle might have been leaked. Click the video on the right to find out what might go down in the SummerSlam main event and watch last night's Quizzlemania 2000 featuring Team Wrestle Talk versus team wrestling with regret, versus team going in raw, versus team fightful by clicking the video under that. I've been Ollie Davis. Jam that jam.